So many investors get caught up in the hot stocks, the big techs, the Microsofts, the Apples, the big name companies of the world, and they ignore the basic businesses, the simple businesses, the boring businesses that in truth oftentimes make more money over the long term than those big name equities. One example, one example is a company you're probably familiar with, Lowe's. Lowe's companies, classic home retail, home improvement retailer. This company, I believe right now in this stressful, doubt-laden marketplace being underperforming year-to-date, being down 21.87%, I believe there is a massive buying opportunity present. Let me tell you why. Based upon the fundamentals of Lowe's, based upon the underlying quality of this business, not the day-to-day price movement, not the fluctuations in price day-to-day, but instead the underlying tangible characteristics of this business, there is not only tremendous profitability, not only tremendous financial strength, but also a valuation which implies a tremendous degree of undervaluation. Let me show you. When it comes down to underlying financial stability of this company, you know, it's fairly appealing. When people look at that cash to debt ratio of only 0.11, they get a bit concerned. They think, listen, the the cash debt ratio isn't quite high enough. They can only pay down 11% of their debt outstanding before needing additional operational free cash flow to pay down their debt obligations going forward. But what people miss with Lowe's, what they miss with Home Depot and these other large-scale home retailers is the degree of free cash flow constantly accreting to their balance sheet. Constant sales constantly bring in a tremendous amount of free cash flow to this company, offsetting that debt-related obligations, offsetting the debt-related risk associated with a low cash debt ratio. So yes, that number might not be super advantageous, but given the free cash flow constantly flowing into the company, very little doubt with this business. This is evidently not only a firmly entrenched, but also massively free cash flow creative company creating a massive degree of underlying financial stability. It's reinforced by the Altman score, an Altman score of 3.96, exuding a tremendous degree of underlying certainty and stability with this business. The chances of Lowe's disappearing within the next two, three years, virtually zero. This is a firmly entrenched, high quality company. It doesn't end there. It's not just about financial strength. It's also about the underlying profitability. Net margins of 8.85%. And you may say, well, those net margins seem fairly low. Net margins of only 8.85%. That's well below what we would normally expect from a profitable company. You know, we've seen Microsoft with net margins of 38%, Apple, net margins of 26%, Lowe's, net margins of only 8.85%. Why are you saying that this is a profitable company, Lockie? Well, think about the industry in which they operate. We can't compare companies across industries. We can't compare Lowe's with a software firm like Microsoft. We need to focus on an industry basis. And on an industry basis, relative to other companies within the retail sector, Lowe's is better than 81.42% of the over 1,100 other companies within that sector. So a tremendous degree of profitability on an industry basis. And also historically for the company, historically these are some of, if not the, greatest net margins the company has ever achieved. So not only is it a profitable company, not only is it a firmly entrenched company by virtue of free cash flow constantly accreting to its balance sheet, but also... It is an exceedingly well-managed business. Look at returns on invested capital, ROIC as some people call it. Returns on investment capital of 27.7%. That is a measure of the degree of managerial competency within the business. How well the management within those are allocating the capital over time to stimulate long-term growth. And based upon that number, 27.7%, they're doing it exceptionally well. So financial stability, free cash flow accretion, certainty, that that business is going to be around 10, 15, 20 years from now. All the characteristics we're after in a quality business appear to be there. But what about the valuation? In this stressful marketplace where we have seen declines day over day, week over week, month over month, naturally the question becomes when you see these massive declines, is there now undervaluation present? Is there a buying opportunity present relevant to the growth rates taking place within this company? When you break down lows, when you break down the tangible growth taking place, The answer is an unequivocal and absolute yes. Let me show you why. When we look at the forward PE of this company, it possesses a forward PE of only 14.96 and a current PE of 16.26. So very, very low PEs and even lower still when you compare it to the growth taking place. Three-year EBITDA growth rates of 42.2%. Three-year earnings per share growth rates of 61.8% and a three-year revenue growth rate of 16.2%. Think about that type of growth. Think about growth on an earnings per share basis of over 61% over the past three years. Ridiculous growth. That's like higher than startup level growth. That's better than Microsoft, better than Google, better than all those big tech names you know about. And yet, Lowe's is doing it. Higher growth rates. And yet, despite that higher growth rate, they've been assigned a lower PE relative 
to all those other companies. What does that indicate to you? The massive differential between the current PE ratio of, or forward PE ratio and the growth going forward? There's one word, undervaluation. An opportunity present to buy what is evidently a very wonderful company at an even more so wonderful price. And let me show you. Let me break down these numbers even more detail. Look at the past 10, five, one year period in terms of growth going forward. The story is just as appealing. A 10 year growth rate consistently of 20% over the past decade, five-year growth, accelerating to 28.6% over the past one year alone, a growth rate of 33.7%. Phenomenal growth, massive growth, consistent growth, accelerating growth present within this company. So based upon the current trading price, current trading price of 199.63 on the day, how much growth do we need to price in? How much growth do we need to price in to get a fair value for our money on lows? This may surprise you, but it's growth of only 7.69%. That's all. If low grows at 7.69% going forward over the next decade, then we're getting fair value for our money. This is despite consistently growing at 28.6% over the past five years. That's a pretty big differential. That's a pretty low growth rate needing to be priced in relative to the growth that's actually taken place. And you may well ask, well, what happens if we price in that high growth rate? What happens if we price in, say, 20% as they've been growing over the past decade? Well, let me show you. We price in 20% growth going forward over the next decade. Discount rate of 9% current earnings per share figure of $12.27 a share. Look at that price target. A price target of $466.37. Margin of safety of 57.19% relative to a current trading price of $199. That, that's the potential available the massive differential in terms of tangible value going forward. Almost, in fact, I believe more so than almost, a double your money prospect. That's the reality of this marketplace. These boring companies, these companies that the market and investors more probably don't seem to focus on too often. This is where the true undervaluation is. This is where the true opportunity is in this marketplace. Lowe's isn't going away. I have a tremendous degree of certainty and stability with the underlying company. Profitability is also very present and the valuation irrefutably is very, very appealing at the present time. So what do I say? I say you conduct your own research. I say you look into the business yourself. I say you take the time to not only understand the company, but also understand these fundamental characteristics. And if everything checks out, if everything says, listen, this is a wonderful buy, as you can see, I've kind of come to the conclusion of, and I say it probably has a place within some investors' portfolios. Of course, conduct your own research first, look into the business before you make any moves. But if you enjoyed this video, if you learn something more about my current thoughts on lows relative to the rest of the market more broadly, then please drop us a like down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or topic you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. would love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.